I'm sure you've noticed uh, that at times, if in public you mention the name of God, you know, not many people will uh, react negatively. But it's often different if you say the name of Jesus, right? Have you noticed that, that difference? What is it about the name of Jesus? I mean, it was a very common name in ancient Israel in his day. The Hebrew uh, name Jesus, of course, Yeshua. Did you know that archaeologists have unearthed tombs of 71 Yeshua's from the period of Jesus' death? Yeshua's were distinguished either by Yeshua bar or ben, the son of, or in his case, it was Yeshua of Nazareth, right? He was uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Despite it being a common name, the commonness of, of his name, the name Jesus, when it refers to the Jewish Messiah, has remarkable significance. The name of Jesus is important because it actually is a compound Hebrew word. It is the, the, the word Yah, which is an abbreviated form of the name of Israel's God, Yahweh, and also the verb Yasha, which means to rescue or to save or to deliver. And so the name Yeshua means Yahweh saves or Yahweh is salvation. It's a name that, uh, of course, is significant because of who it represents. And Jesus totally lives up to his name. In fact, there are three things that I want to share with you about the name of Jesus that is very significant and unique. But before we do so, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I just want to pause and thank you once again. Thank you for the time that we have together. Thank you for Jesus, his name, that name that is above every name, that matchless name of Jesus. May it have more meaning to us today, perhaps than ever before. Open our spiritual eyes that we might, we might see what the name Jesus represents, how wonderful it is. And Lord, I pray that if Jesus is not precious to uh, us, that from this point on, he would become our savior, he would become our Lord, and the name of Jesus would be very precious and sweet to us. And I pray that uh, we'd use the name consciously and regularly and that we would understand, again, the significance of it, we pray for Jesus, that he would be exalted in his name, the name of Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. I think uh, one of the first things that I would share with you about the name Jesus is that Jesus' name releases God's power. Jesus' name releases God's power. Here's what I mean. Listen to the, these verses. This is also in Philippians. You don't have to turn to it, but you probably know these verses. It follows his humiliation and his crucifixion. And then it says, Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things, uh, uh, and things on earth, and even things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why is Jesus' name so powerful? Well, I think because there is authority in the person of Jesus, and uh, his power and his personality is designated by his name. Just as Yeshua or Joshua led the people of Israel to victory over Canaan, Yeshua, Jesus, led his people to victory over sin. You remember how he was presented and to be named Jesus in Matthew's gospel 
Call his name Jesus, the angel Gabriel said, because he will save his people from their sins. And, of course, in doing so, he also saves his people from their spiritual enemies. You remember what we read in the book of Colossians, how that at his death on the cross, he crushed principalities and powers. He crushed their authority, and uh, he rose victor over them. So the name of Jesus releases God's power. And in one sense, he's just another Joshua, you might say. But in another sense, he is the true Joshua. I say that because Jesus and Joshua, the same word, same name. He's, he's the true Joshua who would actually live up to his name as no other uh, Joshua could, more than all the other uh, people that would be called by his name. The name of Jesus is associated with his distinct character, with his, uh, his quality, and the work that he accomplished. The name of Jesus releases God's power. Now think about the powerful name of Jesus, just the exclusiveness of it, for example. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, this is the uh, disciples Peter and John before the Sanhedrin, the ruling leaders of the, of the Jewish people, religious leaders. Here's what they, they say when they're being questioned. Uh, they say this, <clears throat> And beholding uh, the man that was healed, uh, the rulers questioned them, and Peter speaks up and he says, This is the stone, meaning Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Remember the, the lame man that was healed there at the gate of the temple in Acts chapter 3. And so they're being questioned. And this is how he was healed. And then they say, this stone which was set at naught of you builders is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other or none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the exclusiveness of the name of Jesus. Jesus' name releases God's power, saving power exclusively. In fact, that's one of the comments and one of the things that often people push back against when Jesus would say things like, I am the way. There's no other way. There's no other way. There might be a thousand ways to get to Rome, but there's only one way to get to God, and there's only one way to eternal life. There's only one way to heaven. And Jesus says, I'm exclusively that way. So the name of Jesus has power just in the exclusive, no other name, whereby we must be saved. And also, the name of Jesus is seen in its power because it is through his name that sins are forgiven. Listen to this. As Paul is preaching to these Gentiles uh, of Cornelius' uh, household in Acts chapter 10, this guy is uh, probably an Italian. He's a centurion, right? And so he's a Gentile from the nations, and uh, Peter is preaching to them. And as Peter preaches to them, he says, to him, that is to Jesus of Nazareth, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission or forgiveness of sins. So the name of Jesus is powerful. It releases God's power. It is the only means by which sins can be forgiven. They're forgiven based upon the name of Jesus because of what that name means and what he accomplished, his work. It's also, again, a miraculous name. Getting back to Acts chapter 3, where that uh, lame man is healed, when uh, the disciples are being questioned about uh, that healing, here's what they reply. Peter stands up, and he says uh, uh, to them uh, when questioned, <coughs> it says, you killed the prince of life. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being that bold to these religious leaders? You guys killed the prince of life. 
That's who he's called. That's who Jesus is. You killed the Prince of Life, and uh, and God raised him from the dead, and and we're witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. In other words, has healed this. The name of Jesus, it releases God's power, even in a miraculous way, because it's through the name of Jesus. Through the power of that name, that this lame man that has been lame from birth, he had a birth defect, never walked a step in his life, is all of a sudden leaping and jumping and and uh, walking. And it's the miraculous power of Jesus' name. It's healing. It's miraculous. And that's how miracles are performed in the name of Jesus. And then I also thought about the fact that It releases the power of God, the name of Jesus, in prayerfulness. Remember what Jesus said in the upper room to his disciples. In John 14, let me read this. He says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So what is it about the name of Jesus? Well, there's no other name like it. Because it distinguishes who he is in his character, in his quality, in his ability, his work. It's a name that releases the power of God, miraculous power, saving power, uh, sin-destroying and sin-forgiving power, and uh, promise answer to prayer when we ask in his name, which means we ask on his behalf. We ask what he wants. We ask for his sake, and prayer is guaranteed. But also, the name of Jesus not only releases God's power, but it reveals God's presence. The name of Jesus reveals God's presence. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 on that wonderful day of Pentecost, when uh, the people that heard it were so convicted It says they were pricked in their heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, what are we going to do? What do we do? And the answer is, Peter said, repent, repent, and after you repent, get baptized, and and you will experience the forgiveness of sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus, get baptized in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus reveals the presence of God. You're baptized in Jesus' name. Read it throughout the book of Acts. They're baptized in the name of Jesus, and the presence of God is is connected into their lives. They're baptized uh, in Jesus' name. In other words, that's the basis for them receiving the Holy Spirit uh, in an anointing in their lives, his presence. Jesus' very presence is in the life of the believer. And uh, with God's presence, we can enjoy a very close and really intimate relationship and fellowship with Jesus. And uh, as a result, we can be equipped and enabled by him uh, to have supernatural, powerful ministry, gifts that enables us to perform and have fruitful service for the Lord in the church. So the name of Jesus uh, not only releases God's power, but it is such that it reveals God's presence. And thirdly and finally, the name of Jesus represents God's purpose. And I'll show you what I mean by that in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Here's Paul telling them, look, let God's word take deep root and and live deeply in your heart. Uh, And he said, uh, and whatever you do, whether it be in what you say or in the deeds that you perform, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. The name of Jesus represents God's purpose 
It represents God's very life in us. Remember we talked about that in Philippians 1 this morning, that, uh, that the believer needs to come to the realization that Jesus is the Christian life and that the believer's very life is to be lived in the name of Jesus, and that brings honor to Jesus' name. Uh, I'm not going to turn there, but look it up sometime. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 12. In the Bible, when people spoke or acted in the name of Jesus, they did so as God's representatives and thus with Jesus' authority. And that's how we need to act. That's how we need to speak in, in our uh, lives on a daily basis, recognizing that the name of Jesus represents God's purpose. In every way, Jesus lives up to his name. Don't ever be intimidated to not use Jesus' name. Do not be afraid to speak the name of Jesus. I don't care whether you're in college or on the job or uh, in, in a community neighborhood gathering. Don't ever be afraid to use the name of Jesus. Be upfront about it. Don't be, uh, don't be shy and, and don't be secretive about the fact that Jesus is your Savior. He's your Lord. Use his name freely because his name releases God's power. His name reveals God's presence in your life. And his name represents the purpose of the risen Christ. I remember. Just, a, just a, a quick example. I, I'm sure I've given this before because I don't have a whole lot of these experiences to tell you the truth. But uh, I remember in the early days here, we would go out every Sunday afternoon after the PM Bible study and we would do evangelism. One week we'd go into uh, Brighton Beach, the, the Russian speaking area with Russian tracks and one week, we'd, we'd go into a Jewish neighborhood. Well, that'd be the first week in the month. We'd go in the Jewish neighborhood with Jewish track. Uh, another week, we'd go uh, on some street. But one, one of those four weeks in a month, we'd go out to a busy subway stop like Atlantic Avenue. I was the, most, the, the place we went most. And I remember one particular time. We would have a dozen people uh, that would go out like that. And we, we'd hop on the train right after the service, and we'd go to the, the Atlantic Street station with tracks, armed with tracks. And I remember some, you know, some of the group was in a car maybe ahead of, of us. I remember getting out off the car, and as soon as I got off the car, there was this guy. He was just out of his mind railing at, these, at our people who were trying to uh, give out tracks. And... Uh, <clears throat> I don't normally do this, but right at that moment, the, the Lord just put it in my heart, and, I, and I, st I went right up to the guy, and I put my finger in his face, and I said, you, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out of here. And I can't believe that guy. He just, he, he ran. He literally picked up his stuff and ran, and he wasn't scared of me. He wasn't scared of me. I'm telling you, the name of Jesus used the right way at the right time, releases God's power, it reveals God's presence, and it represents God's purpose. And when anything stands in the way of the purpose of God, God will work 